creatives welcome back to my channel I'm Angela a graphic designer and an illustrator and today if you couldn't tell by the title we're gonna be in InDesign now I haven't really done much in InDesign on this channel but today I'm gonna show you how to get the best layouts in InDesign especially if you're doing things like editorial design where you're designing for magazines or if you're designing for flyers and such like that or if you're designing just anything with a lot of text and a lot of information I'm gonna show you at least three layouts that work very well so let's dive in when you open up the program it gives you just your basic first page which is the cover it's usually just displayed by number one, but you can always add pages, which I've added two here. Um, over here on the right toolbar or under the pages toolbar, there's a plus sign down here at the bottom that says create new page. I just tap that twice. If you don't have your pages window open, you can go to window down to pages and select it. The program usually has a keyboard shortcut for this. Mine is F12 and there are quite a few other keyboard shortcuts in here as well. I may have changed mine, I don't quite remember, but <laughs> mine probably are not fully the default. So yours may be different, just follow whatever it says. I'm going to create, whoops, I forget that the magnifying glass doesn't work the same in Illustrator as it does in InDesign. Okay, so we're here on the cover. Now, if you want a nice bold cover, it's usually good to just fill the entire space with whatever image you are using. And for myself, I have an image like this one that I have created. I fill the entire space with the image. Now this will depend on your image and especially like if it's a model or if it's like um, something within a scene like this BMW right here. But um, usually with a model, you'd want it either three quarters or like head on, either central or off to the side. With a full piece photo like this, I prefer it to just be placed more central following like the rule of thirds and then all the text will be on the top half of the page. So text, for instance, we can just do BMW right here. Let's increase it. To increase any like text box or any box in InDesign, you want to hold down control shift or option shift so that way you can get the proportions constrained and correct. This is not going to stay in this typeface. So let's go to properties and instead of Minion Pro, which it always defaults to, I'm going to go with one of my favorites right now. And that's going to be Franklin Gothic. I'm going to go with Franklin Gothic heavy. Let's make this the color that's down there so that way it gives it a nice contrast. There will usually be some like information around here as well, but this is definitely very bold and eye-catching. So that's what you want. You want a cover to grab your attention. There's usually a tagline down here which we can add in. You can just fill that with placeholder text. Now when you're doing layouts, you don't want to constrain yourself too much with what is going to be on the cover. For instance, you do want a title and you want your images to be placed, but with the text, you can go up to type on the top toolbar, go to fill with placeholder text, it will be down there and it will fill this text for you and you get a nice look just like this. So this is preview mode. If you go to view screen mode, you can go to normal preview or bleed. Normal is what you design in and then preview of course is the preview of what it's going to look like when you print it. So a full frontal, very bold statement like this for the cover is usually very good. It definitely catches your eye and makes a statement. I could also change up the colors of a lot of these. Like if I wanted a lighter color for the text, you could change that up. It's completely up to you when it comes to design, but you don't want to spend too much time on the details when you're working on layout. The next layout option is going to be down here. This layout option is if you have an image like this one and you have a lot of body text. So when it comes to body text, and you want to lay it out. There's one key tool that you will need. That is if you go to layout, 
margins and columns and you select the number of columns in the pop-up window. I typically like to go with three or four. Those are pretty like the standard as far as starting out. Whenever you see type layout in magazines, it's usually based on a three or four column grid, even though it looks like there's only like two massive columns. Like I have a magazine right here which uses these layout types. For instance, uh, this one with the picture of Rihanna, a big massive image on the front with a bold heading there and a tagline. It's one we just did. There's usually some images with a lot of text, such as magazines like this one, which has the same type of effect on it where you have the bold image of the model and then you have text around. But when it comes to text layouts in magazines, you can see that they have four, three or four column grid layouts. This one's a four column grid layout where you can literally see the grid one, two, three, and four. And then some of them change up depending on what is needed for the page you end up having text that run across three layer grids, like three column layer grids. And this one is an example of a three column grid here. There's one and then two and three, even though this is pulled across two. So it's literally a third and two thirds, but that is pretty much what I'm talking about here. That works really well with a lot of body text. So if you have, let's say, let me press the T and pull some text here and do our simple trick of going to type and fill with placeholder text. I'm just going to do the same thing here and here. You can also set this to a keyboard shortcut or a default shortcut. Pull these into place. There we go. And you get a layout that looks like this. So with a full top central image here, we can even increase this. I didn't increase it too, too much, but you can increase it so much to where it's like that. You have a lot of the body text on the bottom. You can also choose a layout that is a bit different and you can choose this image here. I'm just gonna hold down my Alt option. If you're on a Mac, it will be the Option key and it'll duplicate it. Shrink this down. And based on this three column grid here, we can use the same placeholder text boxes here. It'll fill out the rest, and then we can duplicate these across. Now this is just for layout. This isn't with actual copy, but as you can see, the image is kind of like in the background, and since we don't want that, I'm gonna send all these to the back by holding down Control, Shift, and left bracket, or um, Option, Shift, and left bracket on a Mac. And then we can select all of these and we can do a text wrap. Now, if you don't know about text wrap, there is a text wrap option. If you go to window and you open up the window that's called text wrap, I have it open already. And you can wrap the text around the image itself or the bounding box. Uh, wrapping around the bounding box will look like this and wrapping it around the object shape will require you to use the pen tool. Now, I say pen tool, but don't worry. It's not really that bad. It's not intense at all. So let's see, where is my pen tool? <laughs> there it is, it was nested. So you can choose a path here and click and drag, create some dots of a path around your image and get pretty close, but leave some space, just like I'm doing here. And this will serve you well to get the best look so it doesn't look like you have a bounding box around the image. The bounding box is the red box that is surrounding the image here that I have. It's a bounding box. It's defaulted to blue, but when you change um, layer types, it changes colors. And you can change the colors if you want. But that is a very simple path. So with the path selected and then all the text boxes selected, you can select the wrap around object shape in the text wrap toolbar and it will do this for you. There we go. Now you can also take the path here and you can hide it in the layers panel. Select the eye and it hides it so you don't see it and you get a layout that looks like this, which looks 
so much better than the bounding box, right? Now, of course, you do have to go in and fix the text, but this is just for layout. We don't need to fix the text here because it's just placeholder text. But I do suggest fixing the text if you are actually going to um, insert copy into here and to make it look better than what it looks like right now. <laughs> so with this, it depends on how big the image is or how small the image is, how like what the dimensions you want for it. Whenever you move the image and the path selection that you created with your pen tool, the text will then move around it as well. So you can do something more central like such. So you have three different layout types here, one for the cover and two for the body text. Text wrapping is really quite simple. Just make sure that you go in and you fix your type. So here are three layouts that you can do. These are not the only layouts. I will pull up a new page and show you. We go to pages, where are my pages? There they are. Go to the pages window, press the plus sign and you get a new page. Now, typically with editorial design, you want to spread. So I'm going to do two new pages because usually spreads are in groups of two. <laughs> Open up this other layout that I'm going to create. There we go. I'm just going to pull this one down. Now there is something called master pages and sub pages. So you can do a master page and then the rest can fall in line and you can get into all like paragraph styles and character styles and all of that. But for the sake of this video, we're just going to do layouts. So let's go to layout margins and columns. I'm going to do the basic three. There we go. And I have a full central top filled image here of BMW. You can do something really similar to this type of layout up here, but instead of doing the image as a text wrap, we're going to do what's called a pull quote. I'm just going to pull this across two columns and fill it with placeholder text. And then I'm going to do this column as well with information over here because generally you have your main information and then you have like side information. There we go, so you have different ones. So you can have the two column and then the one column. For pull quotes, it works very similar to what we did with the text wrap option before. Do a text box off to the side. I'm going to fill this with placeholder text. And this placeholder text, I'm just gonna delete some of these lines. Make this placeholder text bigger. They've been using Minion Pro. Okay, we can use a bold and we can increase the size of this to about 18. 24, 24 works. And this can usually be in a different color. When it comes to pull quotes, which is what this is, you take a quote from the original copy and pull it out and make it bold. I'm gonna centralize it here within the text, select both of them, go to your text wrap, and you're going to wrap around bounding box. And that will give you this pull quote look. It's very effective. There's lots of different ways to go about fixing the text around your text wrap pull quote, but this is another layout that ends up being very popular, especially within editorial design. And then you would have something that would balance it out on the other side. If you have like a really heavy image on one page, then you'd want to fill the rest of the page with like smaller photos and more text if that's applicable, or you would have another image down here on the bottom right with a lot of text on top and such like that, just to balance it out. Because with the layout that was above it, like this one has a full cutout of an image here on the top, and we have a smaller uh, text wrap version of that image over on the right, but it's pretty well balanced when it comes to the amount of information and images. These are some of the best layout types that will help you with editorial design. One thing that I did not go over is drop caps. In editorial design, along with this beautiful layout, you have drop caps that you can make and the drop caps will help the initial letter of the sentence that starts out the paragraph stand out a lot more. I typically like to do a drop cap of three and give it a little extra space in between. So that way you get a bit more of spacing in between the initial cap, which is the first letter, and the rest of the body text. That initial cap, that drop cap, can be any color you want. It could be a color from the image, it could be a color that is within the brand guidelines of 
the company that owns the publication. So you can do a lot with this. These are the best layouts in editorial design that you see being used everywhere. Even in magazines, even in magazines like Fortune and Entrepreneur. I hope you all found this video helpful and if you want to see more InDesign videos with editorial design and such like that, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already and leave me a comment down below of anything you would like to see or know. I do read the comments and I do respond and I do my best to take your requests of anything you would like to know and I will see you all in my next video. See you soon creatives.